Today is day two of a special session at the Capitol focused on our soaring property taxes. Yeah, lawmakers are trying to work out a compromise to provide homeowners some relief from those taxes. A compromise bill would cap increases in property tax revenue at 5.25% a year for local governments. 7% for schools. The residential rate would drop to at least 6.4% and the commercial rate to 25% over two years. Your political reporter Sean Boy joins us live from the Capitol right now. Sean, is there any progress being made? The bill did receive initial approval in the House today after nearly four hours of debate on the floor and many hours of negotiations behind closed doors with progressive Democrats who don't like the bill and they don't like how the bill came about either. The legislation is the product of a compromise with the proponents of two ballot measures. They've agreed to pull their measures if the bill passes. It would cap increases in property tax revenue for local governments and special districts and lower the state assessment rates. The bill, combined with another property tax measure passed into law in May, is expected to save homeowners a billion dollars in property taxes each year. I asked the nonpartisan legislative council to break down the savings with the two bills versus the two ballot measures. It says the owner of a $550,000 home in an area where there are 40 mill levies for special districts and 40 for school districts would save about $220 a year under the legislation and $638 a year under the two ballot measures. But there are trade-offs. The ballot measures would also mean $630 million less for K-12 schools. According to the governor's budget office, that equates to a reduction of $67 million in Denver public schools, $30 million in Adams 12, $5 million in Roaring Fork, and $11 million in Pueblo City. While the state is required to backfill lost revenue to schools, that isn't the case for local governments and special districts. Fire districts are entirely funded with property taxes, and many say their revenue hasn't kept pace with expenses for years. Our fire districts have not seen enough raising income to keep, keep up with inflation. When you can't count on the revenue and what that's going to look like and what your reserves are going to look like next year, much less five years from now, it's just challenging. We can talk all we want about how we will work towards a better funding mechanism and a more appropriate way to fund our fire departments, but that doesn't fix this now. And what we need is a fix now. And continuing to reduce property taxes to our fire departments is not appropriate. The House is expected to give final approval to the bill tomorrow, and then it heads to the Senate. Live at the Capitol, Sean Boyd covering Colorado first. Sean, thank you so much for breaking that down for us.